Uh, potential dividers. We've looked at them before, we've talked about them, and we have used them. Let's just take one last look at how they actually work before we move on. But before we get that far, let's say we have my voltage difference between there and there is... Mike? Uh, 2.4. 2.4. If I now bring one of these leads from the extreme into half wave, what should it be? should be half of the potential. So the work done to get from the two extremes should be twice what it is to go halfway. So I go halfway, and my reading is? Am I getting a reading? 1.2, there about 1.2. Again, there'll be a slight change, it's just due to any different inaccuracy of the wire. One electrical lead is much shorter than the other electrical lead, so that's going to be slightly asymmetric. And one last time, if I go back to the 25 centimeter mark, what would it be? Therefore, what should it be? Was 2.4 to begin with, was it? Uh, six. Six. Quarter of 2.4. <laughs> so we can try and make a direct connection there, and it is 0.59, which is pretty close to 0.6. And just to show you, it's not just a multimeter which is taking readings here. If I now want, that will do you, thank very much, Dominic. Scoot out of the way now somewhere. If I now want to use that to drive a circuit, to apply power to a circuit, I know if I apply the circuit between those two points, what should happen? Light. What was my full voltage, did we say? 2.2. 2. 2. Well, that's not going to light any light bulbs for just about. So we're going to go up here to about 6. You'll see in a minute that that wire will get bloody hot. <coughs> Excuse me. 6 volts. I don't know what my multimeter is going to tell me, but it's enough to light it up. So if I go to the two extremes, is it going to light or not light? Yeah. I know it won't. Light or not light? Yeah. Dummy. Come on, you German people with uh, electricity. <laughs> light. Good man, Dominic, away we go, and we attach it here, and it lights. Now, what's happening here... Yeah, why wouldn't it light? I suppose that's a good... I think the reasoning would be because it has to go through all the wire in between, that narrow piece of wire. But it's... Which is yes, why it's flickering a bit, is it? Well, no, it's, it's flickering because I'm making a direct connection. Yes, <laughs> some of it is going through the wire. In fact, there's a whole lot of it is going through the wire in between, but there's a second amount of current which is being brought to the outside region. So the fact that there's an inside pat up here the voltage go across that, what's the relationship between the voltage across that wire and the voltage across that light bulb? It's the same. It's the same because? They're because they're in parallel. So the fact that it's going through a wire here doesn't really affect what's happening out here. They're both in parallel. Now. So if it's in series, it might not light. Correct. Yep. Now, just one last time. While I'm there, you oh, can the see phone. this string is now getting, or this wire is now getting very uh, loose. If I now go to halfway, what will happen? What will happen to my light bulb? Let's go back to my... Let's it's less resistance. Turn this guy off. I applied my multimeter across here. I got a reading of how many volts? Two. Oh, it's okay. Let's go back to 2.4. Yep, what I got? I got 2.4 volts. I attached it to here. What did I get? 1.2 1 1 volts. volts. Yeah. So let's come back. Let's just ramp that up and say instead of saying 2.4, I got 6 volts. Let's say I got 6 volts between there and there. How many volts will I get between here and here? So that means the potential difference between those two points is 3 volts. The potential difference between those two points is 6 volts. So depending on what I attach it up to and what lengths I use, that will determine the voltage between those two points. And because those two points would be in parallel with these two points, the voltage across here would be the same as the voltage across there. So we make one last prediction, go back to the beginning. It stays quite light and quite bright there. And let's say there's six volts going across it. If I now attach it to halfway, it should be about half down, so I go back to my 50 centimeter mark. There you can see it's just about just enough voltage to light it up, and I'm using my connection here, so you can just about see it there. So why is it doing? Because <laughs> what's the potential difference across the light bulb now if it was six at the three. beginning? Three. It's three, three volts. And if I go back to here, what will it be? 1.5, which and won't be enough to light the light bulb. why would it light if it was in series, or why might it not light so if it was in series? It's in series now. No, if, if it's in series, then all the current which goes through the light yeah. bulbs has got to go through the wire also. Yeah, that's what it's doing it. It's in series now. No. Now, there's a voltage across this part, and then a voltage across the second part. So right. Those voltages are in series. No? The, yeah, the voltages are in series, but the voltage yeah. between the light bulb and what I've got here 
Oh, just that there. Goes. Yeah, there, in there in parallel. So we go back to these guys being in parallel. That wire, those two points, the resistance between there, the potential difference across there and there is the same as the potential difference between there and there because they're in parallel. If it was six volts at the beginning, it would be six volts across the light bulb, and my light bulb will light up. If I only connected it halfway, I would only get half of the potential difference between the black and the blue connection, which is three, therefore only three across the light bulb. This is therefore known as a potential divider because you're dividing up the potential difference. And if I knew that I wanted to, my light bulb working, I would always make sure it's connected between there and there. If I knew it was a very small light bulb, in other words, if I connected up a light bulb here with a potential difference of three volts, and if more than that goes through it, it would load a light bulb. So I could put a small light bulb here, and if I connected it between there and there, what might happen? If the light bulb is only expecting three volts and it's designed to only handle three volts, and I put six no, volts across no. it, it'll literally blow the light bulb. So that's why it's important that you've got to decide where along here do I connect it up. So the potential dividers that we use, what you what they basically are is a variation of this guy here. So that's what you have in the world when you yeah, yeah. This, the dimmer switches. Remember, I said you can talk about everything in terms of voltages or in terms of currents. The dimmer switch. What you're really doing is like putting a resistor in series. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing, yeah, that's true. I mean, you're put, you're putting more and more of this in series with the circuit, and therefore the light will get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Yeah, that would be true. Nowadays, I think the, the normal dimmer switches you get use some fancy electronic gadgetry, and they don't. They're not on that principle anymore. But for some reason, the old fashioned ones that you still get on stages will still use the dimmer switch. Basically what you're doing is you're increasing the resistance into the circuit and therefore reducing the current. So that's really what's going on in terms of those guys. <coughs> okay? So you could be asked, how does a potential divider work? <coughs> so you'd set up a little circuit like this, your meter wire, power supply, and you'd say the potential difference between these two is the same as whatever it is here. But if you have two leads coming off here, it'll be three volts. There it'll be three volts. If you did it here and here, and that's four volts, then you say the potential difference here is two volts. So the contact points determine the potential difference that's being used, and that can then be used to drive the answer. Sir, five minutes. Yep. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Anyway, any questions? Richard? So the longer the wire, the more those go through. Like, is it basically? If, let's come back to here. And if I say I attach it between there and there. And it's just why you asked the question, because I mean there is a lot of confusion here. If that's my wire, I need my pocket clip onto here. There we go. I turn this on, six volts. What's my potential difference between there and there? Six volts. How can it still be six volts? How can it be six volts there and also be six volts back here? How can it? Because the work done wouldn't it be more to get it from there to there? Hmm. And how did the we same. go back over explaining? Yes, the work done to bring the same amount of charge, you'll have to do twice as more which work to bring it from there to there as I do from there to there. So how can the potential between there and there be the same as the potential if I connected it up to there? Okay, because it's been su supplied to six. So what happens to charge if I connect it to there instead of connecting it to there? The charge that passes per second. There's more, there's more there's current going through that. So this, resistance. this resistance, or alternatively, you'd say there's more current per second going by. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the V, remember the V is equal to the I by the R. So the R would go down about half there as opposed to what it was there. Mm -hmm. But the I goes up because you're bringing twice as much. And go back to this, confu this confusion with potential difference. And I often find it confusing. Mm -hmm. It's not the work done in bringing. Uh, the total charge from one place to another. It's the work done in bringing the charge that passes per second is a better way of thinking about it. We generally don't go into that level of detail, but it is that, it is that confusing. We have to say, because the charge per second would be twice as much here as it would when I had it there, therefore we can say that even though the charge would be twice as much, because the resistance would be half, the potential difference would remain the same. Oh, it cancels each other out. Yeah. Uh, that sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're done. Anthony, thank you very much.